welcome everybody as week one is in the books right now in the NFL. Uh, the, as we take a look at right now, the 105th season of the NFL, the first week is officially in the books. And speaking of which, the Pittsburgh Steelers do take advantage of getting their first win on the road against the Atlanta Falcons, which they've only lost on the road only two times in their head-to-head -head history. And a lot of excitement, fluidity with the offense. Uh, here was Coach Mike Tomlin following the game in his opening uh, pre uh, post game press presser. Take a listen. Man, I'm just really appreciative of, of the efforts of our guys. Um, it was a fight. Um, obviously, we weren't perfect, man. It's week one like things, uh, particularly early on in the game. We warmed up to it defensively, man. We dropped a pick or something there early. Uh, they converted some third downs and started the game with a, with a field goal. And, you know, that's, why, that's not why we put our defense on the field to start the game. We had some fumbled CQ exchanges on offense. Uh, we were shooting ourselves in the foot. Some drives got stopped. Um, you know, you, you kick a field goals, man, in a hostile environment versus a good group, man. Um, you know, you're in danger. And so I'm just really appreciative that we're able to get it done. Uh, we got things to work on, uh, but it's really good to, to work on your ills with the W. Um, and so we're going to do that. Um, you know, you start this season, man, on the road, man. It's 32 teams start this thing undefeated. Um, and it's just good to get your first one on the road. Half this league is obviously not going to be winners this week. And to get on the road and, and get out of the gate with a W um, is something that I respect. And um, it's really excited for the guys. <laughs> Right there. I mean, as you look at that game uh, right there, I mean, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean, think did a phenomenal job uh, in this game. We've seen some life in this offense. Uh, the speed, I think things opening up more a little bit. I thought Justin Fields, um, I would give him a C plus in this game as far as like on the passing side. Uh, there's no question what he could do with his legs. I, I thought uh, throughout this game, uh, watching Justin Fields, who actually had to uh, – step in for Russell Wilson. He ended up being the emergency quarterback in this game as a third option. Uh, he couldn't go to a strained calf. So pretty much it was just uh, announced like, like about an, a little over an hour right before kickoff that Justin Fields would get the start. And uh, when you look at his day right here, I mean, the whole thing right here, uh, Justin Fields for the most part, I mean, let's give him some credit right here. Uh, for the most part, he completed uh, for that game 74% of his uh, passes. Uh, he started off the first half uh, 13, uh, I mean, 11 to 13 for 83 yards. And then the second half of the game, uh, 6 of 10, where he slowed down just a little bit for only 73 yards. But the good thing is, we're here too. And if you remember, I was saying in the game plan, one of my keys to this game, for regardless who was starting at quarterback, the Steelers needed to find a way to keep this uh, game plan for the offense simple. And that's a basic formula like almost any team could win right now. I mean, think about that. I mean, they uh, just uh, did a phenomenal job right here, just an all-in group right here. I mean, we've been hearing all offseason, I mean, pretty much how, like, there are uh, – a lot of solidarity by the offensive uh, line and the group. I mean, regardless who was that quarterback. And for right now, you got to definitely uh, tip your cat right now to Arthur Smith. Now, the most part you have to say right here, it was only just a little bit sour. They didn't get no touchdowns on the board. But, I mean, I, I thought this was uh, definitely very uh, key right here when you also look at it, too. I mean, the credit to DLI for pulling this up. So in the last uh, previous four seasons, since 2020, uh, whenever the Steelers have won the turnover battle, they are now 29 and seven, which is pretty uh, decent right here. Uh, and, and aside from like uh, the no uh, touchdowns, I think the only other thing that was bothersome in this game, when we look back at that really sour things a lot here too, was the amount of penalties that were racked up, and there was quite a, a few uh, tic tacky ones that were taken away from. Uh, which T.J. Watt made some incredible plays in the quarterback, getting some forced fumbles. Should have finished the game with three sacks, but they got uh, attacked with uh, nine penalties for 60 yards. It was definitely a larger day of flags right here, 14 flags total in the game. Uh, for the Steelers, uh, six of those nine flags were on uh, the offensive side of the ball right there. 
and one of the few key notable ones on there too, which they did a pretty good job keeping this under control. But this uh, category for yesterday for the Falcons, they had three false starts uh, for 20 yards in this game in total. Now, the one I disagree with was the offensive pass interference by uh, George Pickens uh, right there, which was a 10 yard penalty. But again, I mean, you look at right here too, and what did the defense really have in here? They only had three penalties. Two of them being offside for 10 yards and illegal contact uh, for five yards. I mean, for the most part, I mean, uh, listen, I mean, a lot, I think a lot of positives take away from this. This is not the old Matt Canada offense. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, Boswell right here, who just was pretty much uh, the hero of this game right here. I mean, just he was in the clutch throughout this game. We know he's had his inconsistencies every once in a while, too, uh, when uh, playing. But, I mean, if you think about Chris Boswell right now, I think for the Steelers in today's time, you look back in their uh, franchise uh, history right here, too, for what they uh done, I mean, er er everything, I mean, for just the kicking side of the ball and how – They've been doing a lot of damage control, basically, for the most part. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just been phenomenal. I would say uh, Boswell right now, if you were to ask me, he is probably, like, uh, today's version of, like, uh, he's pretty much like their Gary Anderson, who was, like, a long-tenured Steeler who uh, played uh, 13 seasons with the team from uh, 1982 from 1994. And, uh, Pretty much. I mean, that was a guy who was definitely a clutch picker at times for them. I mean, including the most memorable one versus the Oilers in the playoffs right there where they snuck into the wild card game uh, by sneaking into the playoffs face of the Christmas miracle. But I mean, at the same time, too, I mean, Boswell, I mean, he just did a lot. I mean, just, just uh, helped. And also when you look at it, too, I mean, aside from the lack of scoring on the touchdowns, too, one of the key noble things that uh, definitely popped up in here, that was definitely a nuisance right here. Uh, they went over two in the red zone, but the big thing, too, uh, they managed to get nine points off of three of Atlanta's turnovers. So the Atlanta surrendered nine points off their three turnovers, and the Steelers now go 2-1 versus Kirk Cousins. And for the first time, believe it or not, he finally got sacked in the game versus Steelers, which we haven't seen. I mean, I, I think, you know, for right now, I mean, you got to look at it. I mean, for Terror Austin, I mean, uh, with Mike Tomlin, their pressures were good on Kirk Cousins in this game. Really watched it. I think this defense right now, I mean, you can see to watch them. I mean, up until they get to the playoffs, they disappear for some reason. I think right now, the way you can compliment them, they are a great regular season defense, but they need to prove it in the money games, which is the playoffs. But for right now, I give them a lot of credit for like uh, help spotting them a lot. But I, I think also, too, when you look at it, I mean, throughout this game, I mean, for the Steelers to even like be in the position they've been in, I mean, it, it's just incredible right here where they had to uh, do all this. And uh, look at everything for the most part. I mean, they, they probably had the goal, like, for the length of the field, the score. I mean, a lot of their uh, field goals, I mean, at least three times, basically. And I think that that's pretty darn impressive. Now, I, I definitely say this right here. I mean, just watching this game, this stuff would felt like old school classic steel football from the college days right there. I mean, or they just continue to stir the Kool Aid, where Art really still believes that they have to find a way to get back to running the ball. I think they believe they got their guy with that in Arthur Smith right now. I mean, it's pretty much like watching like Slash and Bust basically uh, in 2024. And uh, Boswell, I mean, like I said, just going six of six to uh, three for long distance of 50 plus yards. Uh, he matches his uh, second uh, longest in his career of uh, field goals, 57 last season. Now, I think there was also some key 
T. Noble guys on defense too that really helped us. Aside from T.J. Watt, you had uh, two uh, good corners right here in this game. I mean, which really manned up and like uh, helped uh, keep the thing in aura. I'm talking about uh, or your secondaries, excuse me. Uh, talk about uh, strong safety D. Sean Elliott who got the interception late in the fourth quarter. That actually eventually set up the game ceiling uh, field goal. Uh, to pull him up with good, pull him up for good for eight points at the game. Then uh, Dante Jackson got the first uh, pick in the first half. Remember right there. Uh, remember Dante uh, Jackson. He was acquired in the Deontay Johnson trade along with sending Carolina a seventh round pick back on March twelfth, and they also received the Panthers sixth round pick, which will turn out to be defensive end Logan Lee. Uh, now, Deshaun Elliott, remember, he was signed as a free agent two days later on a two-year, $6 million contract. Got the opening pick with 402 remaining in the first quarter. And then also, too, I mean, if you, when you look at this game right here, what they're doing on defense, I mean, let's be honest, too. I mean, for, for the most part, too, uh, I mean, right now, you got to look at, I mean, wait until this guy comes back, too, and gets in on the mix. Right here, uh, uh, Cam Sutton, who's going to be missing practically half the season, uh, who's brought who's brought back, uh, to the Steelers on June fifth for a one year uh contract. Just wait till he gets back. If this team could find a way to stay healthy, they could put him in some sub patches, start whatever the case may be. You got a team right here. I mean, like you keep that formula going. The way you finish off the season last year. Or you're right off the wave of uh, playing good, lockdown defense, run the ball, create some uh, takeaways, and have a good turnover ratio. I mean, they pretty, finished uh, pretty off phenomenal right there, I mean, for that year. They finished the season last year uh, a plus 11 uh, turnover ratio, which was uh, fourth in the league. And now, I mean, large part, you have to think all the way back to probably say since when Mason Ralph came to the game, I, I would guess right there if you were to look back. But here we are right now. Now, uh, one a few other noble things, too, uh, that was uh, pointed out uh, by David Todd. Uh, he was mentioning on X uh, saying that you didn't hear Connor or Spencer Aronson's uh, names called uh, very often. But when they were uh, called, I mean, in the game, there was a nice play design uh, for uh, Fields to finish. This was uh, back late in the fourth quarter, uh, which eventually set up the goal, the game ceiling field goal to pull him up for good, eighteen to ten uh, to win this game. Now, as it stands out, it's only after one game, but take a look at this right now. Steelers, after opening up this first week, they are tied with five other teams uh, for first with three takeaways. So they're tied for first right now. The good news is for right now, too, enjoy it while it lasts. But I really believe they could keep this thing on track. They could play the pieces right. Uh, and there's no one else I fear in the division right now except maybe for Joe Burrow. But I tell you what, they got a chance. I mean, let's see how things play out. Once they start getting some conference wins, racked under the belt, get some divisional wins, I think this team has potential to reclaim the AFC North this year. I really do. I mean, a lot of people, as the season got closer, looked at the preseason. A lot of people from the national media being a little skeptical, where they could, or people from locally too, even like Chris Hokey, thinks that this could be Mike Tomlin's first ever losing season. Like I said, it's only one game. Let's not put a lot of stock into it. But for the first game, I tell you what, that offense right there, just moving the ball right there. I mean, being fluid in third down conversions. I thought that was just a statement right there by the team itself. I mean, and going back to Justin Fields, by the way, too. I mean, you, you look at it right here. I mean, third down conversions, wasn't so impressed with his passing. But, I mean, as a team, when we look at it right here uh, for the game, uh, third down conversions as a whole for the team in the first half, they went five or eight. Uh, that was three or five uh, for Justin Fields. Uh, two or three on the ground. Then the second half, uh, Justin Fields was a no-show on third down conversions, uh, going 0-5, but on the ground, 
three of four right there. One of those uh, conversions he made was key block throw by uh, Hay Hayward and Anderson right there. So when we look at it right there, they would finish out the game passing uh, by Justin Fields, three for 10, uh, five of seven on the ground for a combined total of eight for 17 yards. But like I said, I think the biggest thing too right there, nine points off of three of Atlanta Falcons turnovers. The Steelers took care of the ball. That's why they finished the game with a plus three ratio uh, for that game. Now, some uh, sickening news uh, that happened in that game was uh, the loss of punter uh, Cameron Johnson, by the way. Uh, Cameron Johnson, uh, he suffered which uh, turned out to be a season-ending knee injury as his leg got struck late in the fourth quarter with four minutes remaining in the game. Uh, Miles Killebrew would get tacked, uh, however, during that play with a 10-yard holding call, which backed up the Steelers from the 27 to their 17-yard line, and where we saw Chris Boswell get his first career punt off of 43 yards to the Falcons' 40. Uh, you would see moments later right there in the next possession. Like I said, Deshaun Elliott right there, I mean, who actually uh, made uh, the securing uh, pick right there that set up the game ceiling uh, interception. Now, uh, for, for the most part, I mean, when we look at right here, it, it was just it was just just awesome to watch uh, right there. I mean, uh, Deshaun uh, Elliott right there. I mean. I mean, he, he was definitely a guy who uh, dropped out too many Aaron Froze for his liking uh, going into this game, but he said, which affected his confidence to degree, but he's been working out with uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, a bad thing from playing with a front seven that puts pressure on the quarterback. I mean, with that front uh, we can, we have, we can all make plays, according to Elliott. Just do your job for a couple of seconds and you're good. Now, like Elliott, Jackson has picked up playing passes. who got his uh, first uh, interception. Uh, back earlier in the game, uh, right there, uh, when you look at uh, Deshaun uh, Elliott, uh, who uh, got uh, the opening uh, interception right there, uh, back in the first uh, quarter with 407 remaining to play. If I said the other way around, I, I meant uh, Jackson gained the game. The, the key interception that set the game ceiling uh, field goal by uh, Boswell right there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Dante Jackson, I mean, just amazing right there. Like I said, a guy who had his confidence. Jackson who just made a key grab. But Elliott, like I said, getting his first interception earlier in the game, I mean, it was just uh, amazing right there. I mean, just working out with a guy like Mika Fitzpatrick. And uh, here we go right now. But, uh, yeah, uh, Jackson, uh, he's picked off plenty of passes in his career. He went all of last season without one. Now he's got 15 to his name and one with his new team. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Jackson, right there, especially for getting, like, uh, the interception late. Uh, I, I hope this could be uh, turning into some uh, great things right here uh, for the secondary. But... Uh, and, they, and the irony of this thing, too, was uh, when he got the interception, uh, Jackson, by the way, uh, he disrupted the pass from uh, Kirk Cousins to former Steeler Ray Ray McLeod, uh, who then took off uh, weaving through the Falcons' offense. But that's what he did. He ended up running into the end zone where a number of uh, terrible tower waivers were celebrating his interception. Uh, no sure of uh, Steelers fans were both takeaways, so much so that Elliott didn't realize the interaction he had with Mike Tomlin on the sideline earlier in the game after his interception. Tomlin walked up to him, gave him a kiss on the side of the head. Elliott had no idea it, it happened was showing the TV broadcast after the game. But uh, as far as uh, speaking for uh, punter Cameron Johnson, who had the season and the uh, knee injury uh, right now, uh, the Steelers uh, – it was announced by uh, Teresa Varley that they are bringing back uh, Car Corliss uh, Waitman. Now, Corliss uh, Waitman, uh, he was uh, he, he was originally uh, signed as an undrafted free agent following the 2020 NFL draft. Spent time in the practice squad uh, that year, but it was signed to a future reserve contract after the season. Uh, he got released a year later at the 2021 NFL draft, but later that year, 
he was signed to their active roster on Christmas Eve and handled the punting duties against the Kansas City Chiefs in a humiliating blowout loss. But in that game, he punted twice in the in the game where he averaged 60 and a half yards uh, per average, including a long of 63 yards that was a touchback. Whiteman has 103 career punts for a net average of 41.6 and a gross average of 46.9. He landed 31 punts inside the 20-yard line. He saw his most extensive playing time in 2022 with the Broncos, punting 96 times with a 46.6-yard average and landing 30 punts inside the 20-yard line. Uh, he was also he also punted at South Alabama, where in his four seasons, had 158 punts for 6,740 yards. I, I tell you what, I'm pretty much liking this guy so far. Uh, I definitely felt like earlier on that was going to definitely be a nuisance uh, for this team, but uh, here we go right now. Now, uh, let's get back uh, to Justin Fields, uh, hearing his comments uh, following the game. Take a listen. You feel you got off to maybe a little shaky start, and then yeah. when, what point did you settle down? Yeah, we definitely got off to a slow start, um, especially the first play, and then I missed the throw to Van. Um, but, you know, after the first drive, I feel like we, we settled in a little bit, and especially as the game went along, definitely settled in. So, um, definitely had that slow start for sure. What do you think kind of caused the slow start? Was it just first game jitters? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could say it. I don't, I don't have a reason, but um, just know that won't happen again. So. Hey, obviously you want to win any time you play, but under these circumstances, coming back home plus mm -hmm. the first game of the Steelers, how significant of a victory is this for you personally? Yeah, I mean, you know, firstly it's great. Um, I have a bunch of family here, family and friends, uh, old high school teammates. So just to say, um, you know, I, I really couldn't couldn't ask for it a, a better way. So. Um, you know, God, God sure does work in a serious way, so, um, you know, I'm just thankful for him, and uh, really just this moment for my team, so, um, but it, like you said, just coming back home, being able to uh, get a dub against the, you know, hometown team was, was, was great. What about the, the, the fact that the decision wasn't really made, that you were start until you know, almost, you know, game time, a couple hours before yeah. the game? How, how did that play into your preparation? You know, I was just, you know, I always just have the mentality to be ready. Um, you know, I've, I've been in this situation before in my rookie years, so um, anything can happen. Um, so I just always have the mindset of, you know, be ready and, you know, uh, just, just be ready. And there you go. Uh, just feels right there. I mean, definitely some emotion coming right back here. Uh, returning back to his hometown in Atlanta right there. I thought he played well right now. I think definitely the biggest topic like following this game, you have to right now, what's going to, who's going to be the starter for week number two. And I would sure imagine the players that would be taking the vote right now. I think right now you, you roll with a hot hand. Um, I've always been saying I wanted to have Russell Wilson start. I thought he had more of the winning intangibles. Of course, we saw he fell off a little bit with Denver, but still passed pretty solidly last year, cleaned it up a little bit, but not getting – rid of the ball of his hand a little bit quicker and taking lesser sacks. But uh, I think for right now, uh, I like the fluidity so far. I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to disrupt that just yet. I mean, I like to be wrong about the fields, my criticism. But I tell you what, uh, I'll ride with Justin for right now. I'll admit, Justin play the field, as he, as I said. Now, let's go on some game balls right here. Uh, game balls, I'm going to give it to – Two people, Chris Boswell. I thought he did a hell of a job right there. Six of six. He had three field goals uh, upwards of 50 yards or more. Like, by the way, he, like I said earlier, he has second uh, longest of 57 yards, which he uh, did a year ago. I mean, his, his career high as far as his longest field goal was four years ago, back in 2020. I mean, going six for six, and then having him come in a tough situation right there to be an emergency punter uh, right there after uh, Cameron Johnson uh, had that sickening injury. He punted 43 yards, I mean, from the Steelers uh, 17 to the Falcons 40. I mean, that was significant. I felt, I felt right there. I mean, you had, under those circumstances, to get your name called when you're without your punter and the guy who's never punted uh, in his career – Phenomenal job. I think for that, he deserves the main game ball of the game. The other guy who i probably give it to right here, I would also have to say uh, right now uh, uh, for this uh, game, when we look at it, is uh, Dante Jackson, who's the hero of this game. I know T.J. Watt got robbed of a few forced fumbles and some stacks, but 
stacks that I follow is just significant right there, the right moment right there. I mean, making that pick with under three minutes to go, which eventually set up the go ahead field. I mean, the not the go ahead, but the game ceiling field goal, put them up for good for eight points, finish out the game. I just felt that was a key right there. And uh, this team looks like they're ready to rock and roll. We shall see. Uh, but anyway, uh, before I finish out here, let's go around like uh, around the league real quickly. Yeah, here we go! Here we go! Uh, biggest uh, upset of the week right here. I think when we look back at the scores uh, that went down, I mean, I think no question you have to look at it right now. It's definitely the Cincinnati Bengals being upset by the New England uh, Patriots here. I mean, you saw that game right there. I mean, basically in that game, I mean, the Bengals right there who uh, basically giving the ball away uh, two times. Patriots did a good, di- good job putting the ball right there. We lose this game uh, 16 to 10. I mean, which is uh, pretty sickening in its own uh, right there as we look at it. And uh, here, here we go. I mean, it was just a thing right there where he had to make something uh, happen right here. I mean, Joe Burrow, I think a lot of people are still putting him on high pedestal after being in the Super Bowl. I mean, appearance right there. I mean, when he could get this team going, I mean, they're, they click like no other, especially down the stretch. But, I mean, for the most part, too, I mean, it's just – uh. Yeah, this is where they really uh, do their damage control right here. And, I mean, and by the way, too, Jerome Mayo, he gets his first victory as his uh, debut as head coach right here. I mean, you would have uh, the Patriots in this game uh, way old-fashioned, just like how the Steelers did. Uh, control the ga- control the uh, ground game, control and stop the run right here. Uh, they out uh, gained the Bengals uh, 170 to 70 rushing yards. Uh, basically, and uh, there you have it. And uh, they will get three sacks to open up this uh, game right here, the uh, Patriots did, and here we are. And now, uh, last but not least, too, I just want to make a special shout out to Dak Prescott right here. Uh, basically, uh, gets his money deal after all this time. Dak freaking Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys right here. I mean, we, we look at his career right now. I mean, now, he's definitely a guy right here. A lot of people would argue uh, for for a guy, I mean, in his uh, career. I mean, he is 2-5 and five in the playoffs. I mean, only two playoff wins in 2018 uh, versus Seahawks. And then uh, two years ago, pretty much coming up, versus uh, Tom Brady's final game in his NFL career versus the Bucks, right there. I mean, he's 2-5 uh, and five with us. 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions, uh, which is still a little bit high right there. But, I mean, at the most part, too, when you look at the list of quarterbacks who have been getting paid recently, too, I mean, this has been a saga right now. I mean, Jerry Jones, like, saying, you know, after the humiliating pay- playoff loss to the Packers, that they're all in. Well, I tell you what, Dak Prescott becomes the highest uh, cap hit with all quarterbacks right now with $60 million. He comes the first quarterback with $60 million. Uh, Per average, most guaranteed money in NFL history, from what we heard, uh, basically. I mean, and then also, too, I mean, he gets uh, right now for for his time. I mean, think about it. He gets $129 million guaranteed that sign, a contract value of $240 million as the total value. And he's going to be signed for the 2028 season right here. And I got to tell you what, uh, Dak Prescott for right now, I think under uh, Mike McCarthy, when we take a look at what he's been able to do, I mean, he's got 105 uh, touchdowns right now. I mean, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. I mean, itself, I mean, 105 touchdowns. Hundred five touchdowns to thirty four interceptions, and I, I think definitely Mike McCarthy. You can say what you want about him being on the hot seat, but I tell you what, I think especially last year, if he will have won at least like two of those games versus the Bills and the Dolphins, 
and we got that first round by, I think he definitely could have walked away uh, winning his first ever uh, regular season MVP. Instead, that went to Lamar Jackson. I mean, he started off great yesterday, but faded off in the second half. But here we go. So that's it for uh, this week's edition here of uh, Show Blitz, the Mastial Podcast. But with yours truly, Charles Prize Richie, right now, we'll see the Steelers next up take on the Denver Broncos. Uh, get ready to hold uh, your breath for that one. Uh, that one, for whatever reason, visiting the Mile High uh, City uh, has not been too kind to them. I mean, in, in that uh, fashion as we look at it, and it just, I, I don't care what it is, it's just weird, awkward things uh, happen. Just playing or it's the altitude or no matter how good the teams are, it's almost like difficult to pull a win right there. And uh, you look at, they'll be looking to get their uh, first uh, win on the road in Denver. I mean, basically, since, I mean, when we look at it right here, when we're talking about it, in 15 years, that was when they were defending Super Bowl champions. And that was one of their highest beatdowns they given them was an 18 point uh beatdown right there. They're three nine and one a uh, lifetime on the road there. We'll see if they can change that up. But uh anyway, uh, let's keep an eye out for the injury report. But like I said, uh prayers and thoughts of Cameron Johnson. Uh hope he has a a rebound uh next year, whereas with the Steelers or whoever he goes, but uh wishing that man and his family all the best. And you guys, you can follow me again on my social media. Follow me on X at Man Steel CGR and on Instagram at Man Steel Nation. As I leave you, don't be trolling. Be rolling. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. I go. Thank you for watching the Man Steel Podcast with your host, Charles Project Richie, here on YouTube. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for all the latest Man Steel Podcast episodes, feel free to download them on Mixcloud, Anchor.fm, and SoundCloud wherever you get your podcast. He's got it! That's a winner!